Hey, welcome to my channel. This video is some tips or tricks for keeping your home clean when you have a lot of animals. So I have a lot of animals. I have three cats. I have three dogs living in the house right now. I look after other dogs. I have rabbits. I have a parrot. I have reptiles. So I definitely have a lot of animals. And these are things that I've discovered while caring for my animals and keeping a clean home. Having a clean home is really important for myself, my mental health, and just feeling my best, as well as for the health and care of my animals. They are healthier and happier when they are clean, especially birds. Birds are really messy and they're one of the animals that need to be the cleanest. It's really important to always clean up things as soon as you see them. Thinking, oh, I'll just clean it up later, usually never works. And everything piles up on each other, you start to feel overwhelmed. Or thinking, oh, I'll just get dirty again, so I'll just leave it, which is true, it will get dirty again, but you can't leave things, you can't let things continue to just get dirtier. Consistency is the most important thing for keeping a clean home with many animals or with any animal. Even just one animal produces a lot of mess, especially if you have a long-haired cat or dog. So since consistency is important, you want to make sure that you pick a schedule or routine that works with your other tasks, your other responsibilities, and stick with it. Make it a non-negotiable. I like to set up daily tasks, things that I have to do every single day, and then weekly tasks, things that I want to do once a week, and then bi-weekly tasks, things that I do every two weeks. With the weekly tasks, I try to get them done on specific days but if I don't I can move it to another day as long as it gets done during that week. Same with the bi-weekly task. There is some flexibility but it has to be done during that week. For daily tasks I have to clean all water bowls every day and food bowls. I feed my cats and dogs two meals, one in the morning and one in the evening. I don't leave food out during the day for them to munch on so I wash their bowls right after they eat in the morning and in the evening. For my bird, I wash her bowl every morning. For the rabbits, I wash their water dish every morning and give them new hay every morning and sweep out any old or dirty hay every morning. So every animal has their food area and their water area cleaned every day. I also clean the litter boxes every day. I have three cats, so I have three litter boxes and I empty them out. I scrub them down with water and a brush every single day. If a litter box hasn't been used, I will leave it. I don't change it if it hasn't been used because sometimes they don't often all dirty all three litter boxes, but I do have always three litter boxes clean. Wait, I just realized I have four litter boxes. I never end up cleaning all four at the same time though. The most would be three because one is usually unused, but if you have multiple cats, the rule is one litter box per cat plus one extra. This keeps the cats healthy and happy, but that's a whole nother topic. And I also sweep the floors every day. Sometimes I do every second day sweeping, but I usually tend to sweep every day just because there is a lot of fur and especially during the times where the animals are shedding. So those are mostly my daily tasks. And then I have my weekly tasks. Some of the weekly tasks I will do more than once a week, like change the bottom of my bird's cage. This isn't every day, but it also is a lot more than once a week. It's maybe three or four times a week. I just do it when I see that it needs to be done. For a lot of the weekly or bi-weekly tasks, see what works for you, your schedule, your animals. If you have less animals, you may not need to do these every single week, but put yourself on some sort of schedule that works for you and the cleanliness that you desire and for the health and happiness of your animals. But tasks that you should do regularly are grooming your animals. That means giving them a brush and giving them a bath regularly. This really reduces the amount of fur in the home, the amount of dirt and dust that they bring in from outside. It helps reduce shedding, it helps reduce dander, and you can also check on their health as you groom them to check for things like bugs, tick, fleas, or any skin issues, if their teeth are dirty or their ears are dirty. So this is something that I do regularly and something that really helps reduce the mess and the dirt in your home. None of my animals need to be taken to a groomer to be trimmed or anything like that, but if you have an animal that does need grooming from a professional, do it as often as you can. 
The second task that needs to be on a regular schedule but definitely isn't daily is to wash the bedding and your animal's blankets, your animal's sheets, places your animal sits often, and their toys and their leashes. Regular washing of the things that they interact with often helps control odors and allergens. Always make sure that you choose pet-friendly detergents and soaps and check the instructions for washing for each of the items. Another tip is to set up pet-friendly zones. So I have an area where my dog sleep, an area where my cat sleep, like their cat tree, places that are for them. Animals will often pick a chair that is their favorite and they'll go to that and you can put a towel down or a blanket down that is their blanket, their towel, so it's easier to clean up. You just pop it in the wash and you know that they're usually in their designated area. This keeps their dander, their fur, dirt that they may bring in from outside in one area instead of everywhere. My dogs like to nap in their crate, even with the door open. They go in and they like to have a nap, so that's their area and it keeps my area cleaner when they have their own area. So find areas of your home that are designated just for them. Same with my bird. My bird only is in one room and that's the bird room and it keeps all her mess in that one room. Having pet designated areas helps contain pet hair and odors and allergens. It's just a lot easier to know one area to clean instead of needing to clean everywhere more often. When you purchase furniture, keep in mind that your pet is in the house and choose furniture that is pet friendly. That means choosing materials that can be washed often, that are easy to clean and more resistant from stains. There's different fabrics that hold stains differently. Leather is often a good choice because it doesn't soak up stains. You can buy slips or covers, cover your couches and your chairs, and then take them off and wash them or replace them. Choose floor where liquid can be wiped up instead of plush carpets, maybe tile or laminate, materials that are resistant to stains and odors. Put down blankets on things that you care about that you don't really want scratched or dirty and when you want to maybe have people over or you feel like sitting on the sofa or chair, you can take off that blanket. It's really important to treat stains immediately. As soon as you see it, treat it. It's more likely to not set and soak into the fabric and the odor won't be as strong either. It's important to vacuum and to clean your floors regularly vacuum your sofa and your couches regularly, change your bed sheet if you give your animal access to your bedroom, change, wash them more than you would if you didn't have an animal. Vacuums with a HEPA filter are the best types of vacuums for pet hair and dander. Lint rollers are really helpful that you can roll your clothes and the couch, your bed, any surface that may have hair on it. I have air purifiers in my home and I really noticed that they help with my allergies. Air purifiers remove the dander and allergens from the hair and I actually really notice a difference with air purifiers. When you're using soap and stain removers, make sure that they are pet friendly. Animals are more sensitive to harsh chemicals and harsh chemicals can affect their health so be careful with what you are using. I use eco products and they are just as effective as cleaning and removing odors and stains. I actually use a lot of vinegar. I wipe down the floor underneath the litter box every day with vinegar. Vinegar is good at removing the smell of urine. But overall, I think the most important thing is to create a schedule, something that works for you. Decide what day you're going to do it on and the time of that day that you will do it and then stick to it. Of course, life happens, things come up, but make sure that you aren't pushing it back or ignoring it often or for long periods of time. Consistency and frequency is really important when keeping your house clean, especially with a lot of animals. If you have any more tips, I would love to hear them. I always want to learn more, so let me know. And please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
Pets are more than just animals. They are spiritual beings with unique personalities and energies. Do you love your dog and want to live in harmony with your dog while understanding their needs and emotions? Instead of feeling frustrated or overwhelmed by your dog's behavior, improve your relationship with your dog and help them heal from any physical, mental, or emotional issues. I offer a unique combination of positive reinforcement training methods with energy healing techniques, animal communication, and tarot. Receive a personalized action plan created by a certified dog trainer and animal communicator. This package is perfect for anyone who wants to enhance and enchant their life with their dog. Don't miss this opportunity to get this amazing package. Apply now and get ready to create a magical relationship with your dog.